Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I hope you're all doing well today and you're having an excellent day. My name is Luqman and welcome to another quick tip tutorial video. And it's also the start of Ramadan. So for all of those who of you who are fasting and you know trying to do as much good as they possibly can and stay away from doing bad things, then may Allah accept our efforts. And, you know, it's a time for us to reflect on trying to become better people, on trying to improve ourselves and, you know, try to build some better habits uh, within ourselves and in what we do. Okay, but uh, continuing on. Now, in this quick tip, I just wanted to share really Cinemachine. Uh, I, mean, like, I mean, if you're not aware of it, so I wanted to make you aware of it. It's extremely useful as a follow camera, especially for 2D projects. So I wanted to show you uh, how to implement it. So if I just run this, so I already have a very basic 2D world set up. And if I just move the cube, which is the player character around, you can see that the camera follows along and very, very smoothly. It's a very smooth camera. Uh, so, okay, how do you implement it? Uh, so let me just delete the things that I've already got in there and then I'll just show you how I uh, bring it in bit by bit. So to install it, you would go to your Windows, your Package Manager, and you'll just search for Cinema Machine, and then you'll just follow the instructions and uh, install it basically into the project. And it's very simple. Once you have it installed, you're just going to go and create a 2D camera. And this creates a game object with this Cinema Machine virtual camera on it. And on your main camera, you'll find the Cinema Machine brain component attached to it. Now, I've already set my camera to an orthographic uh, projection mode and the size so if I just try that out so I change the size here on the cinema machine component oh and let's just reset uh, all of these things uh, reset the position rotation and all that sort of stuff and I just set the position to like minus 10 so it's behind you can see in the scene view uh, the camera where it's starting from and look it's looking this way so if I go around this way then that probably makes a bit more sense but I don't know I guess you can kind of see what the camera is doing as well uh, so from here, so I've just pushed the camera a bit back so it's looking. And look, if I go to the main camera, you'll see that whatever you set on the Cinema Machine uh, component here as the orthographic projection size, it'll then get assigned to the camera. So that's how you change it as well in game. You go to this component and then you'll change it uh, here. Uh, all right, so I'll just put that back to like 10. And that, and uh, once you've got that, then you just have to tell it what you want it to follow. All right, so you just put in uh, your follow target. You don't put a look at target, so you just put a follow target because you want it 2D. Uh, and then that's it. Actually, that is that is it. So if I just hit play, and that's just the uh, basically the window to t show you what it's looking at and whatnot. And there you go. You can see how well it's tracking as well, and it. It's really nice and smooth, super simple. Now, just out of interest, so that's it for Cinema Machine. If you're interested, let me just show you the uh, two scripts that I have here. And oh, by the way, you can download the package on my website. So in the quick tips section, uh, if you go there, you'll see this video there. And underneath the video, you'll find the download uh, project folder. So yeah, I'm not typing out any scripts here, but you look, you can just go there. You can download it if you're interested and just grab the project as it is. And so that's it. That's my really primitive uh, world generation script. And all I do is I have an array of um, prefabs to instantiate. I'm just saying that, look, this it, it is actually the parent transform is the one that this script is attached to. But that's just my habit, really, that I put that variable and assign it in the uh, inspector. You can see that there. And then you could see that I have this variable called world start is equal to minus 50. And that's simply, I don't want to start at the origin, generating my world at the origin. I want it summed already to uh, the left of the player. Okay, and then uh, number of objects to place. That's pretty obvious. I want to instantiate 25 objects. And this one, private float increment. So how much I'm going to increment by. So in the generate world, it's very rough, crude method I've written here. And all I do is I just iterate through the number of objects to place. And I'm just saying a random, because I want to 
put one of these objects at random. So I'm just saying int random index, um, you know, zero to object to instantiate dot length. So simple, really, really simple. It'll just select one of those objects to instantiate. I just create a new vector three. Uh, so that way the new vector three here will uh, pretty much give the position for the object to instantiate. And all I'm saying is I'm taking minus 50. For example, if we're starting uh, from i is equal to zero, so it'll be minus 50 plus zero plus whatever increment is. In this case, it'll start at zero. And that's going to be the very first position uh, for any object. All right. So, and then of course, at a y height of zero is that's my 2D game. There's no y movement in there, as you can see. And then a 10. So a 10 is to put it behind the player, z in the z axis. I mean, I could have made a variable there that would have been better and just said, you know, z axis position, something like that, and put in it as a 10. And then of course, I go ahead and instantiate the game object at that position with a quaternion identity with the rotation doesn't matter. And of course, with that parent transform and my increment. So increment here is what I use to space the world game objects out. And if you do the maths, you'll see that if you have a random number anywhere from two to four, it'll become, you know, the next time it i is equal to one, we'll have minus 50 plus one, which means minus 49. And let's say through this random thing, it'll become a three. So minus 49 plus three, uh, is minus 46 and that would become the new position and so that's how I space out the world and it just keeps incrementing each uh, time that loop goes and that's how you get a smooth uh, spacing with stuff in the back there and that's my background okay next one is the player as well the player I've just attached a rigid body put in some drag as well and it's a movement based off you know physics so it's a physics movement so uh, with velocity applied directly to the rigid body and it's really 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 simple uh, so it's just I have a reference to my rigid body uh, on this game object and I, that's what I like to do I like to just declare that assign it in the inspector and that way uh, it's just all uh, constantly getting assigned to what I've got, whatever I've assigned in the inspector. And that's my movement speed. And I've just put in here a float axis speed as well. And axis speed is, you know, just looking at that input field that get axis horizontal, you know, our uh, A and D keys or left and right keys as per the default in the Unity input system. And times by the movement speed there. And that's simply it. So that's axis speed. And all then I'm doing in this method then and it's in fixed update because it's a physics uh, application here if axis speed is not equal to zero then just create this um, new vector three this is going to be the velocity simply very simply just put in there axis speed I'm not having any y motion or any z motion and then just simply assign that to the rigid body's velocity and that's how I get my uh, right to left uh, movement. If you wanted to add jumping, you would just simply put in a new uh, like method there that looks for your space bar and you could do an apply force and you would do like an impulse force. You would do an impulse force and that's a good way to do jumping and you can fire a ray cast down and if it's not hitting anything, then you know you shouldn't be able to jump uh, unless you want double or unlimited infinite jumps in your game. And that is it. So uh, thanks very much much for watching and I do hope that uh, all your good efforts uh, don't go to waste and that um, you know inshallah I'll see you in another video okay take care bye